I just filmed for like maybe 10 minutes without realizing that I hadn't I hadn't turned my camera on cool hello my name's Shades and today we will be discussing Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo Shadow and Bone is the first book in the Grisha trilogy, I believe it's called, and Lee has several books other than this trilogy, so taking place in a Grisha verse. Shadow and Bone is a fantasy, high fantasy, I would call it, but I am not great with the categories of fantasy. Our main character is Alina, she lives in Rovtka, and in Rovtka there's kind of like a splice running down the country, splitting it in two, called the Shadow Fold. And she's in the army, she's a cartographer, she's in the first army, and she was supposed to go across this shadow fold, and while doing so, stuff goes down. There are also people called Grisha in this book, and they have magical capabilities, they have different abilities, they are the second army. And so we're following Alina and her journey. I wasn't overwhelmed by any emotion towards Alina, she was snarky, which was kind of fun. I wasn't strongly attached to her. The book in general, I wasn't overwhelmed by it, like it was fun, I enjoyed it, I would give it a 7 out of 10. It just wasn't, it didn't blow my socks off or anything. But I think there's potential to build, definitely, and I think one of my bigger things that I want to happen is a feeling for the world it's one of those where you're just kind of thrown into it and you have to kind of pick things up as you go and at first it's really confusing and you feel like you're gonna drown and you're never gonna figure out what's actually going on you do to an extent it's there's never kind of fully fleshed out like there's a list at the very beginning of the book of all the different types of grisha but it's not labeled which one does which i don't even fully know what all of them technically do. The fabricators, I don't really understand what they do specifically other than invent stuff? Make stuff? I don't know. And the robe system, you can tell who's who by the colouring of their robes and the and the design and stuff. And I don't have it fully down yet. Like I have the general sense but I, I still, I'm not comfortable with it by any means. And just like the way these things work, like, it's called a small science and it's hinted that there's reasoning why this stuff works, why this magic exists, but we never really get to see that explanation in any depth. I just want a better understanding for I think the world in general and the magic system. It's so interesting and I think that was my favorite thing about the book, how interesting this world was, how wholly unique, had a completely different feeling to it than any other fantasy book I'd ever read. I know it's like Russian inspired I think so that was really cool. Another thing that bothered me though is that we kept getting what I can only presume is words inspired by real Russian words and it would be explained what that Russian word was. Some of them happen a couple times and you can kind of pick up on them but then sometimes just there'll be a random one and it won't be explained and I'd be like well, cool <laughs> I guess I'll have to google it only I couldn't actually be bothered to google it. The cover I prefer the original covers I tried really really hard to get my hands on them but I couldn't find them on hardcover anyway and I'm really upset about it. This one isn't bad per se I don't like the color scheme because this one's blue and then the second one's like a greeny color and then the last one's red whereas the original three they're all very much kind of black and gray and red and all of the other books that kind of take place in the Grisha world they're all kind of black and gray and red and gold. The aesthetics of them match very well. The, the aesthetics of the original covers and like the Six of Crows duology for instance match very well. And even of Scars I believe it's called it matches. These ones don't match as well. I also think the design like I like the, what they're trying to do with the marbling effect here and it's really pretty on the spine but it's very flat like it needs some dimension, some foiling, I don't know, some embossing, something needs to happen. I like the little details here and the gold and underneath it's yellow and it has a pretty spine. I'm assuming it was because of the Netflix show or something they're trying to get new readers. I think that's everything I have to say for the non-spoilery section. Goodbye if you've yet to read Shadow and Bone. Okay so Alina has this scar on her hand and we see her fiddling with it or whatever very early on. I was expecting a bigger story behind that. It was pretty obvious that it was connected to Mal. I was just expecting something bigger. I wasn't expecting it to be that she missed him and she held the pot so hard that it cut into her hand. It felt very underwhelming when we finally learned that's what it was and like we already knew it was about Mal and about home. I was expecting it was not like some blood oath or something. He was gonna betray her or something bigger. Mal in general, I was just a little bit, I wanna say underwhelmed. I don't think we know him well enough. It just felt like a very stereotypical typical good character. I can only hope that we're gonna learn more about him and maybe get more depth. It is interesting the way he doesn't fully trust the Grisha though, but I think that's so ingrained on them that most people don't trust the Grisha. But I, I do see conflict potential there between him and Alina, especially like when they had that big argument. I was like, how dare you say those things to her? Her relationship with Mal just in general was really interesting. She's going in this school right for ages and she can't get her power to work and she finally realizes, like it'd been hinted up, 
before ba 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 I can't remember her name the old woman the Darkling's mother she was like maybe you're so tired because you're holding back all the time and Elena was like no I would never but she is that's what it was she remembers back to when she got tested and everyone obviously had been like well, why haven't you been tested and she pushed it down she pushed the power down because she wanted to be, to be with Mal she knew she'd be taken away from Mal so that's why she was so sickly and pale and gaunt because she was using up her own energy pushing down her power it, but it is an interesting dynamic and when they had that argument like he doesn't realise that, that he was kind of the reason that she was like that she was the way she was and I mean obviously it's not his fault it was her decision to make but he doesn't know the full context so when he starts giving her all these accusations like not knowing what she'd been through not knowing that she'd been missing him this whole time you know she didn't ask for any of this i was just so appalled is she not allowed to like make friends and like try and enjoy herself when she's stuck in this situation that she can't get out of it sounded really jealous to me but of course he would argue that he's not jealous he wouldn't want to be a question it's an interesting dynamic and i'm hoping that's like made use of it and it's explored i'm wondering who's end game <laughs> <laughs> like I don't need romance in a book but it, I find it interesting I wonder if it's gonna be not I don't think it's Mal it might be I think I might be a little disappointed because it's kind of I won't say predictable but that's I think the the obvious choice I don't think it's the Darkling either though I think it would have to be a big redemption arc for it to be him I just don't see how Alina would let herself go back to that Wait, it would have to be a really big redemption arc for it to be him. So I'm wondering if we're going to meet someone new and it's going to be someone new. That's what I'm kind of hoping. If it was between the Darkling and Mao, I think if we got a redemption arc, I'd rather it be the Darkling. I don't want her to end up with him as he is now, provided that what we've been told is true. There's another thing that I thought of. What if, like, Alina doubts at one point everything his mother said w wasn't a lie, but what if it, she was wrong? What if she got it wrong? I think I think I dwelled on that a little more than Alina did because I was desperately hoping that it was wrong. And that I really liked the Darkling in the beginning. He was my favourite character without a doubt. He was the most interesting. I loved the way he communicated with Alina and he made her feel and the way he kind of always had her back. I was very upset when I found out that it was all a lie. It was all a scam and you'd been lying to her this whole time. So I don't know if it's just I'm trying to clutch on to any way that we can redeem him possible. But Alina dwells on one point like what if he just uses the shadow fold to stop the war and that's that that in itself isn't such a terrible thing like peace because they've been at war forever he just wants peace and he wants grisha to no longer be outlawed the need for grisha is dying out the guns and stuff are advancing and so they're no longer needed in the same way he doesn't want them to not be needed anymore i think he wants them to still be valued which is kind of oppressive isn't it like it's not the grisha's fault but to force people to rely on the grisha when only certain people are grisha and grisha are treated a very different way it's kind of not fair on the rest of the population. You can see where they're coming from. It would be nice if they could just all respect each other. <laughs> but what if the Darkling uses the Shadowfold for peace and then he doesn't, like, what if he's not a complete tyrant? What if, like, it's his peace on his terms, but what if his terms aren't awful? What if they're just normal people terms and he just genuinely wants peace? Do we find out why he made the Shadowfold in the first place? I, I wonder if she said that. I can't remember. I wonder if that would change my opinion on that at all. The Darkling kisses her out by the lake and then she goes back to her room eventually and she makes her sun powers come out and when she thinks about the Darkling's kiss her light then sputters out. If that's not foreshadowing for stuff to come up between her and the Darkling that they're not meant to be I don't know what it is. And he was always kind of angry. She could sense an anger when he kissed her. I wonder if that's because he didn't really want to be with her or if it, what he said was generally true. I've heard of the Darkling before going into this and the way people talk about him. I knew he wasn't a good character. When I heard of him before reading this, I assumed he was like a cocky, couldn't help but love because he's so smarmy and funny and and I thought that he was like a bad guy but he wasn't like the big bad, he was just a bad guy. And then we read him and he's very controlled and charming and sophisticated and cool and calm and collected. And I just kind of fell for it completely with Alina. So I don't know how he's going to redeem himself. Like when he kissed her at the end, I hated it. He just, oh, the way he manipulated her and the way he continues to manipulate her. I can't see what redemption arc he could possibly go down like maybe for us to forgive him but i don't think it's gonna be enough for alina to forgive him and especially not for her to go back to him the Volcra, they're actually people that used to live in the fold. When she went back the second time, she could hear like a, a human cry to their voices. Very disturbing. It's going to be a show. I can only imagine the potential for it to be really creepy and cool. I wondered if there was more to Mal's 
tracking abilities. Alina says that he's so good. Like she talks about how good he is at one, a lot, but at one point she really dwells on it. We're talking about how it's like his thing. He's like the best at it. And I wondered if like there was some kind of magic or something going on. And there was that whole sweet roll instant, which seemed really, like, why would you risk it? It seemed so dumb to me. Like, she was kind of annoying at times, the way she just kind of did what she wanted and laughed it off. Like, it's not a bad trait. It's just something that grated me a couple of times because I would rather her stop and think. So we find the stag and Alina says that she can't kill it, which is understandable. But then obviously the darkling comes. You'd you think surely her killing it then? would be better than the Darkling killing it and using it as a collar on her. Like, why didn't she just do it quickly then before he could? Just put on her and she's powerless. And it's awful, it's awful. And then when we're on the, the ship, this sand skirt thing, she'd been having all these dreams and like there was some message that she couldn't unpick. Like, I feel like sometimes things were a little clumsily written. Like, these breadcrumbs, I think she needed to give us more trust that would pick up on it. Like the recurring dreams, I don't think she needed to say like, almost like there was some message I wasn't picking up on. And it's the fact that because she spared the stag's life, its life belongs more so to her than it did the Darkling. And all of a sudden, now that she realises this, she can now take her power back. Again, that thought kind of comes into me. Did she need to know that before she could reclaim her power? I mean, I guess so, because then she knew to push back on his hand. But I swear she, like, pushed back on it before and it didn't work. So she, she takes her power back and she saves Mal. And she does the cut, which shocks everyone because it's a big powerful move her and the darkling their powers are very kind of in line like it felt right like she should wear a black kafta because he's the closest thing there is to her they're they're just opposites and it's really interesting them like battling it out between each other and she cuts the ship in half and runs away there's all the other people on the ship and she's condemning them through their deaths as well i was thinking they're witnesses to what has happened they could like spread what has happened but because he expanded the fold i guess a lot of people already blamed him anyway like it says at the end about the rumors about some people blamed the Darkling and some people blamed this and how that decision made her more like him. I don't know. I don't I don't know how I feel about that situation either. Like it is interesting, it makes the book more complex. But I, I think it's suggesting like some moral ambiguity and that could maybe why she's gonna end up coming around to the Darkling because it's suggesting that she's she's similar to him. So it's interesting. I am looking forward to that being explored upon because I, I can feel it coming. I really loved Genya. Um, and she's now a Grisha, although I don't know which one. Like, it's either a heart vendor or a, heart, or a healer, but I can't remember which is which. Like, the threads confused me. With, um, the summoners. See, I'm, I'm learning. The summoners is kind of easy because it's like fire, air. I wish in that key in the beginning they told us the colour of the kefta and the thread because that'd be so easy to flick back to that every time you were confused. And especially in the beginning when you're trying to learn. And I'm worried that, like, it's not going to be re-explained in the next book and I'll just be completely lost. It is mentioned twice. Like, the thing about the amplifiers, that makes sense. I'm good with that. But the one thing we learn about Grisha Theory and their magic, I didn't fully understand. And it was so quick and small. Like, it felt like she put it in there to be like, there is theory behind it. Like, it does make sense. But then she didn't tell us why it makes sense. Like, it almost felt like she didn't have that theory in place in her mind yet. So I'm hoping that's expanded upon. I think it would make the world feel a lot more solid to me. I'm looking forward to see how it plays out. That's, that's the way I, I don't have any overly strong opinions yet. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing morning, afternoon, evening, slash night. My name's Shade. I hope I see you again next time. Goodbye.